can hear me. We're back to West of Loathing for the stick. <laughs> All right. We're gonna continue. <laughs> Alright, so we picked up the doctor and uh, we took her with us instead of um, the guy in the bar because I thought, hey, I think he'll, she'll be better. If we get hurt, we can, <laughs> we can uh, be safe because we have a doctor. <laughs> what do you say, Alice? If we're going to look into this necromancer business, I figure we ought to start with the local cemeteries. Makes sense. Do you know where they are? Yeah, I did some research into the territory cemeteries a while back. Bomb, bomb. <laughs> territory cemeteries? Territory cemeteries. To see if there's a pattern. You okay? Haha, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, there's one not too far from here. All right, so what do you think we should do next, or am I forgetting about anything? I'm gonna see if we're forgetting about anything because I'm dumb and I forget. Alice says you should see the bartender about renting that room in dirt water. It'd be nice to have a base of operations. Uh, asking for another suggestion? Alice shrugs, guess that's all the suggestions she can think of. Much obliged. There's our horse. Let's go talk about the uh, room for rent. This is a spittoon, which is the sort of brass bucket people spit into and spitting it's <laughs> instead of spitting on the floor, because not spitting at all is not an option in this society. I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty int intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. Let's inspect it. Look, the jewel saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting room, or cockfighting pit. Sounds like a party. But in this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside is a fancy rancid stick. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Here we go again. All right, fine. You are now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. Can you imagine how disgusting that would be? <laughs> no, that's bad because it's only the water part of the spit that evaporates. The brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit, the toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth, distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. <laughs> People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. That's disgusting. Should we search it? <laughs> I'm disturbed. Okay, we're gonna search it. You're about to put your hand into the bucket of something the color and viscosity of maple syrup, except inside of the maple it's flavored with the inside of mouths so of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. <laughs> it's just getting worse. Glorp. It feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Oh my god. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like someone ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. <laughs> I love how graphically it explains this. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any, and you hate them. <laughs> Yay! We did a thing. The gal doesn't look like she's in the mood to talk. They're engrossed in conversation. Leave them be. These guys must have fallen asleep during a brawl. It's our partner. Oh. Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a f new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Hi, thanks. I'm Knight. Glad to know you, Knight. 
Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw a sign out front advertising a room. Need help with anything? I'll have a shot of bourbon. <laughs> I've got to have a shot of bourbon. Um, oh, I, I, nothing smart's going to become of that. Come right up. Anything else? Uh, let's find out about the room. I saw the sign out front advertising a room. That's right. Finest room in the house. Plenty of room for your partner, too. You interested? How much does it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker fella, and he paid a month in advance right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like the decent sort, so the room's yours if you want it. Gratis. Wow, great! <laughs> All right, so we got a room. I see you found the local watering hole. Yeah, it's decent. Let me know if you find any whisker, whiskering hole, though. Um, hee hee. Let's see what else can we do. What do you think we should do next? Well, if you're looking to find out the lay of the land, I guess the railroad crew would give you the f fairly literal interpretation. Makes sense. What else we got? Am I forgetting anything? Alice looks pretty low on ideas for side dalliances right now. All right. Let's see, I've seen a feller over here with a beard. Well, I didn't mean to go into that room just yet, but okay. The old man stares off into the distance, listening to the piano. Let's try to talk to him. He doesn't react to you at all. Okay, slop. The man points to the sign on the counter. Slop is five meat. He's got a ginormous uh, unibrow. See bartender for darts. Hey, how comes they're allowed to drink without hats on? Uh-oh. Okay. Well, that was interesting. You got a plate of slop. So what can I do with this stuff? Uh, that will increase my HP. Oh, so I can buy those and use them for um, health increases. You have to hold this little porcelain clown upside down because it's filled with tobacco spit and you don't want to spill out. Blah. So that helps too. So we've got some good thing. Good thing we dug for that, actually. Let's go to the poker room. This poster says rules of poker followed by hundreds of weird rules in tiny print. Read one of them. Two are wild unless accompanied by four sixes of clubs. A 10 is a... Everybody's got their guns out. A 10 is equivalent to two deuces of spades. Any player holding a five must discard 23 cards. Four deuces of hearts are worth the same as nine, but cancel out a deuce of diamonds. Any player holding two queens of spades must draw an additional 26 cards. Threes are wild unless accompanied by a four. Homicide queens are wild unless accompanied by a pair of two diamonds, twos of diamonds. Kings are wild and fives of clubs are double wild. Oh my god. A reverse straight beats a flush. Queens are wild and sevens of diamonds are double wild. A Georgia flush beats a reverse royal full house. Wow. These uh, rules are like stupid. <laughs> a suicide jack is worth the same as a four of sevens. A pair of aces are equivalent to a three, but must be replaced by a jack of clubs. Am I going to get anything out of reading these? Four of four twos of spades are equivalent to two suicide jacks of diamonds, uh, but rank higher than two deuces. A two-eyed king's rank higher than two two twos, but are equivalent to four one-armed kings of diamonds. This is a mouthful. A player with more than twenty cards in their hand must draw a new hand of cards. Any player caught cheating must immediately hand twenty-three meat to the player on the left. A jack is twice as valuable as a deuce. Any player caught dealing from the bottom of the deck must remove their boots. 
Any player spitting anywhere other than a spit tune is immediately wins the game. Oh fuck, I'd spit on the floor all the time then. A seven beats four threes of spades. A player spitting anywhere other than a spittoon must immediately discard three one-armed queens of clubs. A royal backwards backwards flush beats a royal Mexican flush. Threes are wild and ace of hearts are double wild. A full house beats a straight. Any player caught dealing from the bottom of the deck must immediately double their bet. So I think they just keep going on and on and on. There's an empty seat at this table, play poker. No room at this table. This table is full up. Let's play poker. You sit down at the poker table. A dealer emerges from somewhere in the back and sits down next to you. The lady to your right introduces herself as Pearl, and the player to your left says his name is Cecil. The dealer tells you the ante is 20 meat. Ante up. You ante up. Pearl and Cecil toss in 20 meat each. The dealer gives you gives the deck a shuffle and then deals a hand of cards glides across the table to you. It's a really great hand. A suicide queen of spades, two threes, and a tray. It's the first round. The pot is 60 meat, and you estimate your chances of winning around 40%. Um, let's forcefully strategize. You grunt and strain and tear one of your cards in half. Now you have two of that card. What? What? Okay. Um, so now I'm 60% chance of winning. It's the second round of betting. The pot is 60 meat, and you estimate your chances around 60%. Cleverly raise. Cleverly strategize. Um... You're smart enough to know that you should raise, so you do, by 20 meat. You lose 20 meat. This last round of betting, time to do or die. The pot is 120 meat, and you estimate your chance of winning around 60%. Um, I'm going to check. You check and start inspecting your fingernails. Pearl glances around the table furiously, then checks. Cecil grumbles and taps the table. You furrow your brow and turn the cards over a straight... Pearl slowly flips her cards, reveals a straight. Cecil smiles broadly and reveals his cow to a full house. You win. You gather your all. Well, I guess I won that. The piano player is not very good at his job. Let's go in the kitchen. Hey, what are you doing in here? Employees only, bud. Oh, sorry. I was just... You know, looking around. So you're the nosy type, eh? Well, I prefer adventuresome. As it happens, there's something you can do for me. I'm out of saltpeter, and I need <laughs> I need you to go pick some more up for me. Saltpeter? Isn't that used to make gunpowder? And other things. Look, who's the chef here, me or you? Okay, okay. Where can I find it? Your best bet's a military camp. Because it's used to make gunpowder. Shut up! The nearest one here is Fort Cowardice. They keep it in the little green jars. The chef marks the fort on your map. Be right back. <laughs> you like my voices, Sty? This lady's too busy washing dishes to pay attention to you. <coughs> Excuse me. The shelf is full of canned bottles, ingredients, and a box of slop helper. Delicious. Atop this pot belly stove is a pot of slop. And a pot stove top of slop pot. Blah, blah, blah. No, I haven't got it yet. This is where the chef prepares ingredients for cooking. It's also where he parks his beer. Alright, so... Let's go to the stage. Nothing here. Cowbell, hit it. Couldn't resist, sorry. All right, where are we going? We've already been there. We've already talked to them. Oh, I guess we can go to our check out our room. I didn't do that yet.
I can sleep. I can look out the window. You call yourself a yellow booted goblin plucker and jerk. You gain an effect angry. You better not insult yourself anymore. You'll get angry and you're liable to pass out. I love the wonky walking. You go to sleep. You dream that you're shopping for belts with a ventriloquist dummy while fleeing from a dark secret. After that, you go out drinking with a chattering skeleton. You wake up screaming. Well, okay then. You wake up refreshed and restored and hungry and sober. That's mosey. Day two, the second day of the rest of your life. Hey kid, what's on your mind? What do you think we should do next? Am I forgetting about anything? Well, well, if you're looking to find out the lay of the land, I guess. Okay, so we already knew that. So we don't need to do this. Right. And we also need to go deal with the, let's go to the map. We need to go to the graveyard too and the railroad camp. Wow, this place is huge. So we can buy some stuff here. Advanced cow punching. Sounds interesting. Um, Vienna blood sausages. Ooh, uh. And this is my inventory, I take it. Poor Belle, it was abused by Papa. <laughs> it liked it. This is the post office. Hi, I'm Knight Merritt. Any mail for me? Mm, nope. Darn. One of these new fangled telegraph machines. But she looks pissed. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Okay, I'll talk to this kid. Whoops. Well, I didn't mean to buy those, but I guess I got flowers now. The clerk clears her throat. Howdy, are you the sheriff? No, we don't currently have a sheriff. Um, I could be sheriff. I'd be a sexy sheriff. Um. Okay, I could be the sheriff, maybe. Um, do you have law enforcement experience? Uh, not really. Have you been to sheriff school? Do you have an existing relationship with Dirt Water's local res government? Are you familiar with all the local audiences? Do you even live here? Uh, no. Then what may I ask in tarnation makes you think you'd be qualified as sheriff? I just assumed. You just assumed that you could mosey into town and become sheriff on your first day. Well, when you put it that way, she snores. If I had five meat for every wide-eyed protagonist-looking kid who wanders in here thinking they'd <laughs> most important tenderfoot to ever strap on an iron, I wouldn't need this dead-end clerking job. Sorry. It's okay. Like I said, it happens all the time. Offer to help. Do you need any help until you find a new sheriff? Sure. If you're any good with a gun, there's always somebody in need of some justice. Wanted posters are back there. Cells are over yonder. She points behind her and off to the right, respectively. Take your leave. There's posters. The wonder poster reads, The Stripey Hat Gang for Grand Theft Paint and Tasteless Hat Vandalism. Last seen in the vicinity of the Cavern Canyon. Uh, 1,000 meat reward. Dirty, rotten paint thieves and low-down, no-fashion sense hat vandals. Despicable. Want to go after them? I do. The wanted poster, er, a wanted poster. Accuracy is important. The House in the Desert Gang. For mortgage non-payment, squatting, and general public nuisance. Also for murdering two collection agents. Last seen at the House in the Desert. 500 meat reward. Okay. In any case, or you wonder if the house is named after them. Or if they're named after the house. In any case, at least their location is ambiguous. Want to go after them? I certainly do. We're going to take care of them.
An empty cell is all ghostly. Okay. You like my walking? You are, <laughs> you are eight up, Sty. A vacant lot. A vacant lot. Can I not talk to them? You saw the sign, nothing past here. All right. My walk's better than your walk. Okay, so we have multiple options. I think I probably should upgrade my stuff here, but let's see what do we got. What can we do? You drink the bourbon, trying to strain as much of the dirt out as possible through your teeth as you do so. You don't do a very good job of it. And let's eat the slop. You choke down the slop, wondering why pigs always seem to enjoy this stuff so much. Got 15% stench resistance. Okay. What do I have as far as equipment goes right now? Oh. Um, I really don't have nothing that... Well, let's go over here and look. Is there anything we can buy that's gonna help us? Read this, learn a new cow punching skill. You got dynamite soda crackers. I don't know. I don't know if, should I buy that? I don't think people notice these walk, no. <laughs> I don't think they actually pay attention to him. And they should because he's extremely important. Um Okay, why not? Probably just wasted the money, but. There's an essay about how to do a particular kind of setup that makes your abs really thick. I wish. I wish I had thick abs. Gives Brawny, a perk which increases your maximum HP. There's a chapter that about gives situational awareness and it improves and its importance when trying to survive in a world full of demon cows. Gives Ever Vigilant, a perk that increases your maximum AP. There's a chapter about adapting stampeding behaviors from of demonic cattle from human use it gives bull stomp a combat skill that does a small amount of damage to all of your enemies um like legit abs like I've got a keg that's all right I'm doing the butt scoot all right let's go we're gonna go to the desert house first you find a crate of supplies bound for the nearby army fort Looks like it fell off the wagon, or the driver fell off the wagon and was too drunk to strap it down. In any case, it looks like it got knocked open by the fall. You fish through the crate and help yourself to its military contents. It's not like these army cowards have any use for it. Back east, they're coward Heidi holes. I got a full canteen and a silver bullet. As you dismount and approach the house where the bandits are holed up, you hear a voice from inside say, what was that? Uh oh. Looks like you're gonna have to be sneaky if you wanna avoid a full on fracas. Sneaky is my middle name. Wait, really? Yes. Sneaky is my middle name. Okay, if you say so. Thanks. So, so is that the house? From the sound of it, you'd say this dog house contains an angry dog. Let's weigh our options. You're not gonna be able to get past it without alerting the gang inside the house. 
Should we just fight him? Should we do an all-out fight? <laughs> all right, let's see. Taking him out. You got a bag of ears and such, Desert Gang six gun. You got a black hat and some black boots. Oh. Can we get anything around the house? I guess we can't go in the house and investigate. The dog has wandered off in search of some better masters. Probably a good thing. Fort Cowardice. The cabin. Let's hit the graveyard. Off to the one side of the trail, you see a covered wagon and a small family of settlers who look upset. You folks okay? We're on our way to dirt water, but our wagon went and broke down on us. That's rough. You're liable to get attacked by bandits out here, or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts, or other things that basically live exclusively on stranded travelers. Isn't there something you can do to help us? Well, we can give them a ride to dirt water. All right, I'll give you a... Wait a minute. You've got two horses hitched to this wagon. Why don't you just ride those? What? You do know how to ride a horse, don't you? But, but, but these are just cart horses. Oh, for the love of... We're going to help. Why is that so loud? You help the confused settlers figure out how to sit on the back of a horse and lead them back to dirt water on a road. Alright. Oh. So let's go back to the graveyard. That is right. You stumble across an overturned stagecoach. Let's flip it over. <laughs> this looks good, doesn't it? Don't be afraid of this hat. It's not inherently bad, just a common style for bad guys. So, is it better than my hat I've got now? It gives me muscle, and this one gives me one armor. I think that's better than my other gun, isn't it? Four to five damage. Six to seven, yeah, that one does do better. 
Some of the stuff I need to sell. Here lies Dave B. Died with his boots on, but not his pants. Dig up the grave. I got some brown boots. Thanks, Dave. This tree has dozens of messages carved into the bark, each reading Dave was here. Here lies Dave C. Went down in a theater. These remains look pretty restless. Here lies Dave J. Ra pa pa pow. Here lies Dave L. Died of a heart attack. See you in negative 36 years. Looks like the grave digger left his lunch here. Oh boy, free lunch. We got blood sausages and a thermos of spiked coffee. I like spiked coffee. Here lies Dave G. He was looking to the sky to save him. But even the sky can't save a feller from 40 angry bears. Here lies Dave G, murdered by a different feller named Dave G. Here lies Dave D, the truth was out there, it killed him. This pile of bones isn't moving around for a change, dig through it. You got a skull with an odd tag on it. It's mostly just boring broken bones, but you find a skull with a weird tag on it, okay. Go in this creepy place. This is one of those things they have in a mausoleum. You know, one of the big marble things with a drawer full of skeletons. Open a whole bunch. Let's leave them be. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we can't access that one. I've seen something move over there. Oh, it's the, it's the reflection from my light. Hey, FaZe, how's it going? Let's open one. Hmm, what's this do? Come on, Alice. You did it. You dragged a skeleton out of the drawer and then beat it up and put it back in the drawer. <laughs> Yeah, you got grit. I got skull chips. Mm -mm -mm. Wonder if they're cool ranch flavored skull chips. Alice picks up a bone and examines it carefully. I can fight a whole bunch. Let's do it. Kinds of stuff. All right. Is there anything else we need in here? Let's go deeper into hell, apparently. Well, this looks like a great place to be. It's a big stone sarcophagus. It's a pile of mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. Investigate. You dig through the rags and find a few things that look like they're worth keeping. We got a gore, gore splattered scroll. If I could talk, human ashes, and there's some kind of receipt. We got a robe receipt. I wonder what that is. Some kind of ritual circle drawn on the ground on red chalk. That's probably not red chalk. That's probably blood. These 
bones are jumping around to beat the dickens. Beat the dickens out of them. Let's do it. Let's level up. Hey. That's so loud. You check the bones for the dickens. Nope, you beat them all out. We got some teeth. Alice surveys the scene and jots some notes down in her little book. We got some gumption. All right, guys. Ow. Get him, Alice. Thank you. <laughs> you made the restless remains more restful. Our mystalic mysticality rose up. We got a skeleton bone. And her eyes light up. Evidently, she's had an epiphany of some sort. Alice becomes stronger. I like Alice. <laughs> Progress towards next skill up. We got some more skull chips and Alice investigates. All right, I think we're done everything we can do here. Well, I'm glad you're here watching me, FaZe. I appreciate it. At the side of the trail, you see a small hell cow. A hell calf, really. It snorts at a patch of brush, lighting it on fire, and then starts grazing. Uh, let's fight it. to pick but you have a bone this scroll is almost too covered in blood and viscera to read luckily for you, you've gotten all the practice reading inside of a dog you scrape the largest giblets off the scroll and read it it says to take a pile of human ashes spread them out in the shape of a person in red chalk in a ritual circle sprinkle them with stardust and place the most perfect better dry sphere than the heart would be anyway that's just about the actual chest three vowels Weird gibberish. So I need to go back and do that then, I guess. Interesting. This skull has a little paper tag to it in cemetery loan on one side. The tag on the serial number says it was borrowed from submissionary catacombs. This thing is really late. The back of the catacombs is address. Okay, we got another place to go. What else we got? <coughs> Anything good? I don't think so. I'm trying to find out. You've been poked by so many cactuses, your body has built up an entire set of skin capillaries just to deal with the constant puncture rooms. Cool. Ooh. So do I, can I? This is a spider. The crate says medicine scrawled in the paint. Open it up. You got a bottle of laudanum, 
laudanum, if I can talk, and army filled trauma crit. I can't, why? English, I can't English. You're a sudden chittering coming from behind that hole. Uh oh. You should leave right now before that spider eats you. Okay. No way you're going back in there. Oh, I guess I had to pick one of them. Well, if I would have known that. It's a coffee cactus. Or a sneak. A sneaky. Okay, you're really pushing your luck here. If you get any closer, they're definitely going to attack you. We're going to fight them. Um, I regret nothing. These hats look great. Stop shooting me in the penis. Did you see my ad? Does it look okay? Kill me, Alice! Stripey hat's reign of bad taste. We got glamour. You take the leader's tattered tooth or tattooed tooth as a means of identifying him. You got an item tattooed tooth. You also take one of those horrible hats as a souvenir. Danger kitchen, danger bar. Let's go in the bar. All these bottles are empty. Looks like a place needs a new bartender. What's this? Maybe they killed him for playing the jaw harp too much. We got a jaw harp. Let's go back out. Let's check the kitchen. There's, ooh, there's somebody here. The poor chef is ch chef. The poor chef is chained to the wall. His eyes widen as you approach. Hey, you're not one of them. Are you here to rescue me? Yep. Oh, thank goodness. He thrusts his hand into yours and shakes vigorously. I'm Doug. Night. How do you do, Doug? Uh, he needs a voice, doesn't he? Yeah, this is a stick man game. It's funny, too. Well, I've been chained up in this dank cave for weeks, cooking for the stripy hat entities. That's awful. Let's see. He needs a, he needs like a soft voice, doesn't he? Like, the worst part? There's perfectly good oven eight feet to my right, and a shelf perfectly good at ingredients eight feet to my left. Uh, what's the worst part? This chain is only four feet long. That's rough, pal. I know, right? There I was, fresh out of culinary school with a million meat idea in my head, and now here I am. Four feet shy of my dreams, cooking the same pot of soup over and over again. What million meat idea? Well, you, uh, you promised not to steal my idea, right? Yeah, I promise. Okay, then. It's a new kind of sandwich or maybe a taco. It's so revolutionary, I'm not sure where it fits into the whole food text of me thing. But, uh, anyway, in the middle of it, there's a sausage. But it's sausage made from the cheapest possible parts of a pig. Ground up so finely that you can't identify him anymore. He's talking about a hot dog. And it's served in a long split roll, which soaks up the grease so you can't tell how fatty the sausage is. 
And the best part, the name, you ready to hear the name? I call it the Hot Dog. Get it? Hot Dog? <laughs> okay. Sounds great. How about the Hot Knight instead? Don't be ridiculous. Hot Knight? What does that even mean? <laughs> hey, there's no need to be mean about it. Not that any of this even matters. If I did get off this chain, there's no point in hanging around this empty cave making hot dugs just for myself. I don't even like the taste of them. You could set up shop in dirt water. Brilliant, you're a genius, Knight. I know. Hot dugs for sale all day, every day. I'll make a mint. Say, there's an idea. What if I added mint to the sausage mixture? You help him break his chain, she leaves the cage, hauling the oven and a shelf full of ingredients, muttering to himself about new sausage recipes. That's it then. Suicide. You can't get this pile of junk without hurting yourself. But what if I want in there? There's stuff there. So we can't go any further that way. I'd like to go back in there. You spot an old mine on the horizon. Abandoned mines are safe and fun to explore. You discover a new location. I wanted to come back here and see if I could do that spell or whatever. Some kind of ritual in circle. Perform the ritual. Let's see. According to the gross scroll, you need a human ashes and some stardust and a glass sphere. If you want to do this ritual, you dig through all your stuff and you didn't find any glass spheres. But where the hell do I get glass spheres? I don't know where I get those at, so... Ooh. I guess we'll come back when we get glass spheres. Ooh, me. Let's go to the snake bit mine. You notice the trail of, of burnt vegetation off the side of the trail, which can only mean one thing. A hellcraft is grazing nearby. Let's go after it. Must be hot where I am. Well, it is pretty warm here. Putrid cow bile? That sounds disgusting. You look at the mine equipment, you have no idea of what any of it does. Ask Alice to, Alice to explain it to you. Hey Alice, you know how this stuff works? Nope. Well, okay then. Hey Alice, what? I just wanted to tell you about this mining stuff. Um, okay. So this first machine here, it's an automatic fuel dredger. And this thing over here used to extract retrograde deposit and then powder it. just messing around for a minute. Oh, so I could, I figured out if I kept going, I'd get something out of that. Is it any good? You stick the twanger in your mouth and pluck it as best you can. <laughs> the 
picked up a axe or something. But I don't know where it went. I guess it was nothing. Oh, I see eyeballs. You see a snake curled up in the little hole. Pull it out and punch it. Temperature there. Night night. Alright. I don't think we can do anything with this stuff. There's a smoking snake in the smoking hole. I wonder what that does. Get him, Alice. Some smelling salts, thermos, a spiked coffee, and some oil. The den is full of snake aids. Pull them out. Easy enough. We got a pickaxe. all there was to that. That's unfortunate. Got some more meat. Alright. Let's go to Fort Cowardice. to convert that. I'm not very good with the conversions. <laughs> you encounter an overturned wagon surrounded by ruined books and broken pairs of spectacles. Looks like the family, especially literate homesteaders, met an untimely end here. Tragic. You pour over the detritus and manage to find exactly one book that is both undestroyed and remotely interesting to you. Advanced Cow Punching, Volume 151. Nice. This is a complex pronunciation guide written by linguists who is raised by cows. It gives menacing moo a skill that reduces the muscle of all your opponents. The chapter is about situational awareness and it vigilant raises your maximum AP by two. Gives brawny, which increases your thing. I, I'm gonna do the maximum AP. <laughs> then you shoot the book into pieces because you don't trust it or anything else anymore. The book had it coming. Don't judge me. I need the foraging skill, but I don't know where to get it. You climb up to the watchtower and take a look around. Nice view from up here. It's administration. The cabinet is mostly empty, but there are a handful of boring personal records in the back of one of the drawers. They're incredibly boring. I want the details. Major Urza Wolf II, 66 Bean Slinger Division. Killed in action? Nope, give me another. Wounded in action? Is there anything? Anything? Yep. I can't get enough. This was once a reception desk, but now the most appropriate thing for us to receive a free treat. Free, la, 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 la. free trip to the dump! Oh, I just seen something. Looks like there's still some good mess here. Let's take it. Military grade whiskey and a hard tack. We got Shaker Assault Peter. 
The stove is beyond cleaning. Yuck. Cupboard is bare. In general, this is a door. Most, more specifically, it's the door to the general's office. Even more specifically, it's locked. Door to the general's office. We picked the lock. Oh, the sh he's still in here. You probably shouldn't try and open this pie safe while the, gob the goblin is shooting it. Oh, it's a goblin. The goblin is seated at the desk, repeatedly firing his pistol at that pie safe. Get their attention, leave them to their business. Uh, what are you doing? Shooting pies. Oh, it's shooting pies. Can you elaborate on that? Why shooting a pie? To destroy it, obviously. Must be destroying terrible pie. What's wrong with the pie? A uh, human will never understand. I can uh, not bother him. Can I? Okay, I got rid of him now, and I got the lead pie. Okay, that's how we did that. I had to figure something out for that. I thought I fucked it, but I didn't. You hear the sounds of several goblins snoring inside the tent. Go in, guns blazing. I could leave them alone. But I kind of want to fight them. Based on the papers and the anatomical diagrams scattered across the surface, you're guessing this desk belonged to Fort Cowardice's nurse. The papers are mostly just boring medical records, dental daguerreotypes, limitations that the antibiotics haven't been discovered yet, that kind of thing. What's this? You got marching orders. They're just a bunch of disgusting drawings and slipes to open bodies. God dang it. This shelf still has some unlooted medical supplies. Render them looted. We got some good stuff. And I don't have safe cracking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They've got quite a few high health points, so. Back up. Apparently not. Besides this toilet in Goblin, which means it's pretty likely goblins use this tent as a toilet. No way you're gonna go in there.
So we got a cannonball, which I don't know what we're going to do with, but we got it. we can do here so let's hit it I wanted to fight those goblins but you come across a horse trying fruitlessly to figure out how to use a pair of binoculars those aren't for you buddy the horse reluctantly agrees and trots off leaving the binoculars behind we got some disposable binoculars. These will come in handy. They will also come in pairs because otherwise they wouldn't be binoculars. Right, what's, what's we got here? Why isn't the train moving? This guy should never be put in charge of a switch. He's too busy playing with his watch to get any work done. Ask him where he got it. Say, that's a nice watch. Where'd you get it? I bought it from this gal who runs a store down south of here. Name old Button Willow. Button M M something. Where's this store exactly? Oh, you can't miss it. It's right in between a cactus and a different cactus. He points a spot on your map. Thanks. Don't mention it. Let's mention it. <laughs> She's not getting... She's not getting much track laid, but she's an expert whistler. You approach the beleaguered looking man with tiny glasses. Howdy there, who's in charge of this outfit? If I'm being charitable, I'd say that fellow over there in the white hat is the foreman. He points to the man next to a huge pile of rocks. And if you're not, he smiles. Then I'd say that paperback idiot over there in the absurd white hat is the fellow you're looking for. Hey, are you in charge? I just wonder if there's anything I can do to help. You know what? You know what? If I can speak, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm having such a hard time talking today. I don't know why. Ever since I was a little boy, huge, magnificent, roaring iron beasts, they were magical to me, like dragons. When the opportunity rose to take management of this trail line, I jumped on it like a shot. Are you, you know what I learned? Organizing and building running one of these operations is the most amazing pain in the ass you'll ever imagine. You want to go help? Congratulations, you're the new foreman. I'm going home to play with my models. Okay. Well, I guess I'm the boss now? The man looks you up and down. Well, now I suppose you can't be any worse than the last clown. Name's Smee, I'm your assistant. What's the situation? Well, I'm sure you didn't miss seeing that giant pile of rocks blocking our path. The surveyors say there isn't any suitable mountain pass and we can't ray route even if it takes months. Any ideas? Well, by my calculations, we could dynamite it clear without too much trouble. Problem is, it'll take a lot of dynamite, a whole year's worth. I fear we used to keep that much on hand for emergencies, just such as this one, but a pack of goblins stole it. Sneaky little varmints. All right, I'll get back with you. So we've got the gulch. Um, so we need to go there and get more dynamite. We can't wake him up. Okay. So we've got the Gulch, Button Willow Store, and the Old Mission. Let's go hit the old mission real quick. You see a streak of fire blasts across the sky and land just over the horizon. You ride the site to the impact to find a meteor. Go after it with your pickaxe. Holy cow, I got the stardust. Unfortunately, you pick melts from the heat of the meteor. The heatier. You're not a priest, you shouldn't mess with any of this stuff. Pew pew. Nice. It's an empty relic case with a spot for a soul, or a skull, 
There's an empty relic case with a spot for a pelvis. An empty relic case for a spot with a finger bone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What's wrong, sister? They came back. They just came back and took them. I couldn't stop them. Whoa, slow down, okay? What happened? Our holy relics. The saints just stormed up out of the catacombs and took them back. I don't know what to do. I thought maybe if they'd fire me if I tried to stop them. The cardinal will be here any minute. What am I going to do? To start, take a deep breath. Try to calm down, okay? What's your name? I, I'm Sister Mary. My name's Knight. Now what's about this saints? Our missions are missions to protect these three sacred relics. I'm the relic keeper. It's my specific job to look after them. Wait. Do they call you Memento? She shows the ruler. She shows you the ruler tucked up her sleeve. No, they do not. Okay, okay, sorry. What happened? The saints, oh, it's too horrible. They just came, they came to life somehow. They came up out of the catacombs, all skeletal, ghastly looking. I mean, it's probably blasphemy to say, but I nearly fainted. And they took back their relics? Yes, and if they aren't recovered before the Cardinal gets here, I'll be in so much trouble. Uh, how much time is there? Well, actually, he's months overdue, so it's probably not all that urgent, but still. All right, I'll get him back. I'm everybody's bitch in this game, so why not? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, wait a second. Are you going to have to fight them to get the relics back? Because that's probably blasphemous, too. Uh, I mean, probably. But if black magic brought them back to life, that's like super blasphemous, right? So it evens out. Oh, dear. The Cardinal is going to want to have a very long talk about this. But go ahead and do what you must, I suppose. We gotta go find them. Who's this? Good luck down there. Well, I guess we're going here. The goblin looks like it was hauled down here fairly recent. It's empty. Curious. It's a precariously balanced pyramid of skulls. They're all riled up and twitching. Kick over. Are you sure? There's a lot of them and they're really mad. Let's kick them. Oh boy. They've got a lot of hit points. This may have been not the smartest decision I've made. skulls alone. This skull has a gold tooth. Take it. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna take his tooth. This skull is twitching in an unnerving fashion. Though I guess there's no way it could be twitching that wouldn't be unnerving. Alright, we're gonna kill him. Well, he's already dead, but you know what I mean. Don't judge me. Souvenir spoon. The skull is whispering to you. That doesn't seem right. It just sounds like gibberish, though really creepy gibberish. There's an empty alcove with a little serial number written below it. Oh, hey, it's where that skull you found goes. We put it back. The pile of skulls have been seaming it together for some reason. Leave it alone. These bones are jiggling rattly. Let's fight it. Oh, he's got two. Okay. Shoot, Alice! 
You just hit me with your head. Do you like my voice in this face? <laughs> say this way to Pasello del Santo it's a plaque read it here lies Saint Bifas after he died his body kept trying to rise to heaven but it was just so heavy it kind of flopped down flopped around a bunch they had to enter him in a big stone sarcophagus to put a stop to it gross Jeez, they really knew how to build heavy stone sarcophaguses back in the day. Open it. You grunt and strain and force the heavy stone sarcophagus lid. There's a skeleton inside. Holy crap! His bones are huge. Fortunately, he returns Bill asleep. Uh, we're going to leave him alone for the moment. Let's look at the rest of these guys. The remains of some kind of dark ritual. This stuff looks like it's abandoned weeks ago. Here lies Santa Corcada. She was drawn and quartered by heretics, and then the quarter had to have her head on it, was beheaded. The disember, disemberment was so effective that nobody was able to get her body to stay together, even after she was just bones. Spooky. Here lies Saint Pope. He was excommunicated for impersonating a pope, but there was some kind of bureaucratic issue, so they weren't able to unbeatify beatify him. I'm a pope, seriously. So do we need to bother these guys? St. Pope sounds benefit behind his dais. He just keeps doing pope gestures, ignoring you. How can someone look so smug without even having a face? The longer you watch him, the more he gets on your nerves. You unleash a torrent of insults that make a sailor brush, and the sailor's mother is shamed of the sailor. St. Pope's eyes narrow. Looks finally managed to make him mad enough to fight you. Jesus. What an asshole. This guy is gonna kill me. Ah. All right, we gotta get rid of these guys now before they kill me. Ah. Stop sleezing me! Ah. Ah. They're all about the sleaze. Ah. Pretty sure you got the bones assembled correctly. Let's fight them. Nope, at the very last moment, by it, bones fly apart. Seems like you've accomplished was making them angry. Oh boy. destroy a skeleton. That 
was helpful. plan to play it. I just haven't gotten it yet. Hopefully I can pick it up soon and play it. Giant skeleton, I guess. You grunt and strain and force the heavy stone sarcophagus slid open. There's a skeleton inside. Holy crap, his bones are huge. He appears to be asleep. Holy shite. <laughs> Ow. Why don't you just calm down there, bud? Some trash, clove chair root butts, stack of black eyeliner pencils, that kind of thing. The necromancer's cultists are real litter bugs. It's strange though. How'd they even get in here? Wait, what's this? A note? Yes, it's a note. Cryptic note about ley lines. Uh, it's time you start gathering clues about the whole print and blue and dead situation that's going around these parts. You grab a notebook and paper clip into it. We should check that out. You open the necromancer's journal and examine the information you've collected so far. You found it weird that you found that weird ley line diagram, but you don't know how to interpret it. You need somebody to help you. Somebody smart. Somebody knows a lot about magic. Looks like that's everything you've got so far. Well, I think we can get out of here now. Oh, praise be. Thank you. I'm glad to have helped, sister. 
I must reward you for your efforts, though we don't have much, but you might find these pants handy. One of our old priests left them behind. We got kneeling pants. Sexy. These pants, or the knees of these pants have been reinforced with leather patches, which is handy for both praying and brawling. And other things. Hi, T-Bear. Sorry, I didn't see your message there. Is there anything else we can do? Uh, we can go to the gulch. You notice a campsite off the distance that appears to have been very comprehensively trampled to ruin. We got a destroyed campsite. But let's keep going where we're going. How are you, T-Bear? A fancily dressed goblin steps forward. Hi. Hello. Being a mayor. Welcome. Now go away, please. The goblin seems friendly, but blocks your entry into the gulch. Talk to the goblin. Can I not coming in? Sorry. Only for goblins being very private. Well, we're going to outmuscle him. You roll up your sleeves to show the bulging arm muscles. The goblin is either unimpressed or doesn't recognize the menace in the gesture. So you pick him up and toss him over the wall of the gorge. Sorry, Mayor. You hear a quiet rustling as though a single goblin were rummaging through a crate filled with a straw. Go in and beat the straw out of it. Um, I'm good, T-Bear. Thank you. Um, I've not seen you here before, so welcome. <laughs> yeah. That's half his hit points. You're done. <laughs> Library and go Goblin. You listen to the door, it's quiet. Let's go inside. The shack is filled with crude bookshelves. The bookshelves in turn are filled with crude books. Three titles catch your attention. Let's see. Complicated numbers. How to bird noise. Alice going into the sing glass. Hey, thanks for the follow, T Bear. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, the popular children's novel has been translated into Goblin, Jaggerwocky. Still reads pretty much the same. Oh, it really being a toast of slithering. Oh my god. Very complicated numbers. High level mathematics. Browse more. Bird noise. Dreaming detailed treatises on the sounds that different birds make. You probably wouldn't expect to learn how to do such an accurate and great crested greeby impression from a book. But that's how detailed it is. Okay, we don't have any more we can do there. Let's go here. You listen to the door, but you don't hear anything. Rats, looks like the door is locked. Oh, I don't have any lock picks. No sound. The shack is filled with thousands of tiny cabinets, each labeled with a number and goblin. Look at a random drawer. We got a goblin lollipop. Goblin sandwich. Goblin trousers. No, I think that's it. You hear a couple of goblins wrestling around in there. Sounds like they're doing something really important. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. videos on my YouTube channel. You can check it out if you wanted to. There's a ton on there. 
Um, so yeah. You look around the building, it turns out to be filled with rotting fish. I bet that smells delicious. You don't hear anything inside. The shack contains a bed and a desk. Let's investigate the bed. The bed, it's made of cactus legs with a blanket made of worn, woven together cactus needles. Ooh, that sounds awful. The desk is strewn with folders. You notice one that says important secrets on it. Read the important secrets. You learn a variety of secrets, though the only one that's actually pertinent to your circumstances is that there's a spare key to the treasure cave in drawer 69105 in the storage hut. Nice. So we need to do that. You press your ear to the door and hear somebody delivering what sounds like lines from Hamlet except in Goblin Tongue. From the vantage point, you also notice there's a sign next to the door reading backstage entrance here at Bean, with an arrow pointing to the back of the building. But, uh, let's head backstage. To being or not to being? Oh, that is a question. Could it be better thinking to suffer a crazy things than arrows? Or fighting so many bad things and stopping on them because fighting? To dying, to sleeping, to sleeping. Hey, dreaming maybe, but oh problems. If dreaming crazy when living, what dreaming having after dying? Wow, pretty weird probably. After a while, the bits where the actor has to do a sword fighting with themselves was pretty entertaining. Can I do anything else there? Nope. Listen to the door, but don't hear anything. Looks like it's locked. Damn, I need more needles. Side guard barracks. Heading guns blazing. It's probably gonna be bad. What are you doing? My dog came in and scared me. Let's take out with the axe. So I bet the axe would be pretty bad. Yeah, that was bad. That hut. This reminds me of Fortnite Stickman version only. <laughs> we got the treasure key. Okay, we unlock that. We might as well just go in. Oh boy. The goblin is paying more attention to their book goblet than to you. But you're pretty sure you aren't going to just go by waltzing by it. Should we spoil the ending? <laughs> well, that's where I am. The goblin guard is whittling a little bird, wooden bird call, but they're not too busy to beat you up if you get past them. Try out your new bird call skills. Wow. And like the other two guards, this one is being very attentive and seems very suspicious of you. Also, unlike the other two guards, they have a name tag that says Gene. Yeah. All right, Gene, I'm coming for you. He's got a lot of hit points, too. Ow. Um. Well, we're riddling away at him anyway. Ow. Ooh. Well, that hurt. Um, 
We better heal up some. there for a minute. <laughs> wow. I'm really... I gotta... I really need some lockpicks. Can I make lockpicks or... I don't think I can, but... I'm gonna have to buy some lockpicks and come back here. And I need to get the foraging skill too. Oops. Let's go see if we can get anything at the store. You find a crate, le crate, a crate laying by the side of the trail. Its lid knocked loose. It has fell out the back of cart, LTD stenciled on the side, which seems a bit on the nose. But hey, free stuff is free stuff. You got a handful of nails, ranch dressing, and a bar of soap. Okay. <laughs> Anything over there? Ow. Can we buy some needles? Let's take a look. I can. Oh, you can only pick so many. Wow. That kind of sucks. But we got some, so let's go back and pick the treasure chest. Then there was like two houses out here, I think, that were locked. I got a goblin engagement ring and a goblin tiara. Vundaba. We got one place out here. Oh. Well, apparently, I don't have any more lockpicks. Find a flyer for a dynamite store up north. It's charred around the edges. Looks like it got blown here by an explosion. You mark the address down on your map. This knapsack seems like it's taken a lot of abuse recently. Let's search it. Now, the knapsack seems like it's taken a lot of abuse recently, but the contents are trapped from being stomped on. You find a dented can of potted meat though, and you also note that the knapsack has a knife Sheath strapped to the side, but you don't see the knife anywhere. You got potted meat. Ow. Dikes, you think this maybe used to be a person? Diagnosis, Doc? Cause of death hit by a freight train? The only tracks I see now are cows, though. Could have been cows, I suppose. There's a leg missing, though. Cows aren't meat eaters. Well, neither are trains. Let's follow the tracks. You follow the cow tracks for a hundred yards or so, after which they stop suddenly. There doesn't seem to be anything of interest nearby. Let's go to Dynamite Dan's. A nearby hissing sound alerts you to the presence of a snake, or at least something that sounds like a snake, which turns out to be a goblin cooking flapjacks on a flat baking hot rock. The grayish batter sizzles as the goblin pours out some more. And then they look up and give you a surprise look. Hey, what? What, a human? Hey, what are you doing out here, you? You thieving flapjacks, maybe? Let's talk to it. Be calm, I will not jack your flaps. Did I say that wrong? I won't not flap your jock jams to flapping? Please, what are you wanting? 
Um, should we demand the flapjacks? Your flapjacks to giving them to me. I demanding. What? You're not jam flapping. We're just saying now. The agreement I had to alter it. Cool, we got some goodies. We got some yummy flappy jacks. Whoa. Can sell all kinds of shit here. I really need, like, needles is what I need. I need needles. Lots of needles. Tons of needles, even. Like a whole year supply of needles. Alright, let's go to the train. You hear a cry or dry cough behind you, and you turn to see a skeleton dressed in a molding old tuxedo with a silk top hat shuffling toward you, jesting angrily with his walking stick. The funeral lily pinned to his lapel is gilded, has all of his teeth. Guess he was trying to take it with him. Let's just fight him. Gilded lily, a gold tooth, and a skeleton bone. Alright, let's take care of this uh, stuff here. Any luck finding a year supply of dynamites? The passengers are getting reckless. Good, perfect. This will do the trick just fine. Hang back for a bit while I get the fellows to set up the charges and I'll let you do the honors. Smee consults with the other workers as they inspect the rocks for a time. Eventually, one of them shrugs, pushes a whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks, and wiles the detonator. Let her rip. Uh, wait, uh, don't you have a longer detonator cable? Nope. Great. The surveyors didn't say anything about a crazy rock monster. Quick, you're the protagonist. Do something. All right, we're going to do something. This isn't going to go well. That's as fine a day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We'll be getting the rest of this track laid down and head out here. I'll mark my, our route on the map for you in case our paths happen to cross again. Thanks, but can I just ride the train? Got a ticket? Ah, uh, just kidding. Cause you don't. Every seat on this train sold out. Sorry, boss. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I'm the boss and they just left me here. All right, where else do we need to go? That's the railroad camp. Let's go back to dirt water. Your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would be definitely a good use of your time. You discovered a new location, Shaggy Dog Cave. The 
Look at all these plaques on the walls. Think they're important? Probably not, but if you don't read them, you'll never know. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Read it. A record of events of the expedition into Shaggy Dog Cave. Having acquired through various and sundry means a story in which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time, a map purporting to lead a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and the train robber Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Blackbright, along with three compartments or compatriots, these being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mining pick, a large coil of rope, and a large basket of eggs, as well as a swimmer of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large shaggy dog, and a buffalo. After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived in a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch, the horses and the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer, except for Sai, who was satisfied with water. The plaque bolted to the cave wall. The barman provided our drinks as requested and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar, asking us if we'd care to witness something real interesting. Considering that we had still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he'd never been there personally, but gave us rough directions, which correlated nicely with our notes on our map. That's a lot of freaking reading. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies were missing were the butt four and the entire basket of eggs, apart from that one dog had concealed in a pocket of for safekeeping. We also discovered that the dog had a cop been sounded with one of the horses, forcing Nate and Cy, after drawing lots, to share. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for, we headed on out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercifully upon us, though we took small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than in November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible desert mirages, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not retail in here for reasons of length. However, I will relate to you the three odd occurrences that happened to us within the trek of the desert. The first two or three hours out of dirt water, when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon the metallic object partially buried in the sand. This revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it on the wagon with our other tools. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired to our destination and replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave. Though we did not disclose the reason for our journey, the goblin confirmed that we were headed on the correct course and mentioned that he only had a short time earlier witnessed a large shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed and continued on our way. Sometime later, we encountered a large adobe hut occupied by two identical seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as peculiar, given that the two of, there were two of them, but I felt it'd be rude to question them on that point. <laughs> yeah, it is a name for a cave, isn't it, Faze? One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they co commented that they had seen a large Shaggy Dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agree that this is an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for a butt for, and we continued on our way, excited to be finally nearing our goal. After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave. 
carefully keeping our excitement in check, at least we becoming cautious. We up unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took a brief respite in the cool shade from the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug uncocketed and shared the egg he had saved from their basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided that it was time to come explore the cave. Discovering that we had neglected to pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source from which to eliminate the cave, we declared that it is fortuitous that Nate had discovered the antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick. We were relieved to discover it lit easy and provided a very accurate, adequate amount of light. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse. There were no side passages which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, we resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress through the cave and engrave them at the tail of our journey such that anyone who had discovered the cave after us might be entertained and identified by our story. A card reading! Soon we came to the end of the tunnel. It's <coughs> making me cough and dry. Doug took turns with excavation. I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sy's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise. And we were hauled by a traditionary style treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. There was a plaque bolted to the wall. The chest was locked with an ancient rusting iron padlock which broke easily with a sink of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brilliantly upon the jewels of every color shining in goods of precious metals. Just as promised by the legends of Black Cole Jr., joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest under our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading and may your own endeavors be equally successful. That was a waste of time. I read all that for no reason. Makes me sad. This game trolled me. This game trolled me. dirt water. You find a crate of supplies bound for a nearby army for it looks like it fell off the wagon. Well the driver fell off the wagon and was too drunk to strap it down. In any case it looks like it got knocked open by the fall. Got some silver bullet and a hard tack. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to cut the stream here and we'll uh, pick it up in the next one. Yeah, it didn't sound the right, Faze. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm going to take a little short break. I'm going to get a snack and then I will be streaming over on YouTube and Facebook too. So, yes. <laughs> so, make sure you uh, check out my YouTube channel if you're watching this. I, I stream mainly on Twitch now, but... Um, I've got some more videos, just pre-recorded videos on YouTube, so make sure you check that out. Uh, thank you for the guys that followed me, uh, for the bits and the subscribers, all that. I appreciate all you guys. I thank you for all your support. It means a lot to me. Uh, we'll meet in the next video. See you guys.